So we're back with a follow-up video for the Airbus H160 and the Airbus H145. We're going to be talking about follow-up trim settings and how trim release behaves in each of those different situations. I'm Blue Echo, and we are sitting outside of a custom scenery that was put together by Chris Pie Aviation, or Crispy Aviation. Sorry, Chris, if you're watching this, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, I could see either being appropriate, but we're at the Airbus Helicopters Facility in Grand Prairie, Texas. If you guys are interested in this scenery, you can find it on flightsim.to, and there'll be a link down in the description. As well, we're flying a custom livery that was created by Zach B. This is the Airbus H160 PHI, available for both the civilian and luxury variants of the helicopter. Today, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about the AFCS system and how the trim release and specifically follow-up trim settings are going to affect the behavior of the helicopter. Let's jump right into it. So we're inside the helicopter now and on the tablet here, we're inside the aircraft setup, the little blue icon on the bottom right, and we're under the setup tab. Here you have uh, control of the different settings within the helicopter. My current settings are cyclic control with centering springs. I use a Windwing F-16 EX flight stick with a very short extension that gives me a little bit more of a throw. My current SAS stability levels are set at zero and I have dead zone set to five. Um, it's important that we talk about this because this will have an effect on follow-up trim and the AFCS responding to our inputs and stuff like that. So hands-on indicator will show when the helicopter starts to pick up the input that you're putting. If this is set too low, when you're just resting your hand on your controls and you want to be in level flight with the AFCS going, make sure that you have this set high enough so that you don't uh, inadvertently provide input to the helicopter because depending on your setting, that may allow the helicopter AFCS system to recognize that and it's gonna retrim for what uh, it sees that you're trying to do even if that's not your intention. So we can see dead zone here is set to five um, for my cyclic control. For the tail rotor control, I have centering springs, which is the realistic setting, um, and stability level zero with a dead zone of five. Same type of situation. You wanna make sure that you can have your feet on your pedals and just normally without you trying to provide input, um, set this low enough to uh, immediately respond when you start to provide some input, but high enough that just resting your feet on the pedals isn't providing that input. And you'll see the icon come up with feet on there. SAS stability level, uh, currently I have it set to zero. And then for those that are using a keyboard, you can do large default, small and smallest, each of the different increments that you would use for a keyboard input, how much it's gonna adjust your collective is affected by that. Okay, so we're over the airfield here, or just to the right of the runway in the grassy area, and I currently do not have hover mode on. Uh, the helicopter is sitting a little bit with a, um, a forward and left attitude. Uh, we're you know, very slowly taxiing here in the air, but a couple things here. If I want to adjust the trim back a little bit and to the right a little bit, I can use the beep trim to um, make those adjustments. No upper modes are engaged. And so if you watch the other video that talked about how beep trim can adjust your heading bug or the altitude um, setting or your indicated airspeed, those bugs are adjusted by the beep trim when the upper modes are engaged. When you're in attitude hold mode here like this with the default AFCS system, those beep trims are actually small adjustments to the attitude of the helicopter. So right now, even though we're um, kind of hovering here manually, AFCS is doing all of the flying. I'm not providing any input, none of the uh, tail rotor or cyclic show hands-on. And this is where we're gonna talk a little bit about what follow-up trim does. So 
when you want to um, you know, provide that input, you would normally have to press trim release. And there are four different settings. You have follow-up trim off, follow-up trim hover, follow-up trim cruise, and follow-up trim both. You can see these on the tablet here uh, in the, I guess, fourth line down on the settings. Hover is currently, um, is currently indicated. So to briefly explain what those are, off means that any input to the helicopter that I want to make to this attitude, I have to press trim release to have that attitude reset with the AFCS. Any input, I'm going to switch to off right now, any input that I provide, it's going to acknowledge that input, but you're going to see the helicopter is going to drift right back to that attitude. Now I can still beep trim it, and we're going to try and do that just to get ourselves stopped from moving backwards a little bit. I can provide a little bit of forward input here with the stick, but it's going to recover. It's going to return us right back to that. Now, I did not hit trim release when I made that adjustment. If I press trim release now, and I provide a little bit, I'm resetting that location. Now you can see we're moving forward and we're moving a little bit to the right. So pressing trim release again. I'm able to make adjustments to that. And once I release, it's going to lock into that point again. I want to try and slow us down here. So off means you need trim release for the attitude to be adjusted by your inputs, regardless of whether you're in hover or cruise. Now we'll switch this over to hover mode. Before I had to press trim release to have the helicopter see any of my inputs. Now in hover mode, as long as I'm traveling less than 30 knots, which I don't think we actually are, we're traveling 35 knots. So let me slow down here. We just saw that transition into it. Right now, that attitude, when I pull back a little bit, that nose up attitude is going to lock in place. I did not press trim release there. So as long as I'm traveling under 30 knots, I do not need to press trim release to have my input acknowledged and have that move the trim for the attitude adjustment into place. So hover, as long as you're under 30 knots, if you provide that manual stick deflection, it's going to move the attitude hold to that new spot. It's basically in a trim the helicopter to match where you hold the cyclic. Hover is the default realistic setting that matches the helicopter. All right, cruise, it's the same concept, except instead of allowing that input when you're under 30 knots to reset that new trim position for attitude hold. When you're under 30 knots, it's going to ignore it. You need to press and hold trim release for it to reset the attitude when you're in cruise mode. Now, if I was cruising at over 30 knots, I, was a, I would be able to provide stick deflection and have it assume that new attitude. It's going to be the new trim point. You can see just see it snapped back there. Let's provide some trim input. I'm going to give us some more collective. We're going to climb up here a little bit and we'll start cruising. Because I think this cruise, once you see this demonstrated and you see, um, you would have seen both hover and cruise together, it will make sense. So I can provide this input up with the cyclic, I did not have to press trim release there. If I want to roll a little bit, I'm not pressing trim release. We're in cruise setting. Now the helicopter is assuming that new attitude trim with the input that I had provided. If I want to straighten out here, I can provide a little bit of left. Once I release, this is the new point that it picks up. So we've seen hover, we've seen cruise. The last setting here is both. Uh, I used to fly with both, and when you're cruising around, if you forget or you don't want to have to press trim release, you can change the attitude of the helicopter, right bank, nose down a little bit. It's assuming that new trim attitude set position when you're in cruise, and it will also do the same thing 
with um, with hover. So somebody might ask, why wouldn't I just want to leave it in both? You probably do if you feel that that's useful, but I've actually set that over so that I don't inadvertently, while I'm in cruise flight, bump the stick and not provide input that I meant to. Most of the time I have hover modes engaged while I'm flying straight and level. I might throw an attitude hold, or I'm sorry, I might throw altitude hold and indicated airspeed hold on as well as using heading or nav. And the helicopter is gonna adjust the attitude of the plane to make sure that it's trying to maintain those parameters that I've set. Currently, I believe that the indicated airspeed is taking priority over altitude. So if you're seeing the um, your altitude hold, if you're seeing the helicopter drop when you try to um, increase your indicated airspeed, I believe that the indicated airspeed is prioritized right now in the current build. If there's anything that you take away from this, knowing how you have set this will explain or help explain why the helicopter is behaving some of the different ways that people are seeing it behave. Um, talking about how to bind trim release um, in the previous video where I talked about key binds and controls. Um, I have a pinky lever on this F16 stick that it's basically you squeeze it and it's pressing a button in. So when I squeeze that handle on the back of the stick, trim release is pressed in and the button is held in. If you have a button, the, the, the default button on the helicopter is actually on the top of the cyclic. But if you have that button or a button that you can comfortably hold while you're taking off landing and providing input, just it's, it's active while you have the button pressed in. That's the default binding with rotor trim reset, I believe is the default. There are also two other options for people that might want to um, set something up a little bit different. The first example would be if you needed to bind trim release to a switch. So, you know, binary, one, one flip of the switch is on, one flip of the switch is off. Some people have setups where that's the, the best that they can do. Um, and there's a set of key binds for those. I'm gonna put them in a little graphic on the bottom. So you'll see a little lower third pop up with the graphic for the, the default key bind there. And then the other one is a latching key bind. So you press it, it latches it on, you press it, it flips it the other way and latches it off. And that would be if you have a button that you want to say, I'm turning off trim release, and then you press the button again to turn it back on. It's a latching, you know, either one, but most people, and by default, they'll find a button that they're okay uh, holding for trim release. So press it, it's engaged. Now I can provide this input. Once I release it, that's set like that. If I had this on a switch, I would have to flip the switch make my adjustments, get it where I want it, flip the switch off. And now we're gonna set that. And then, like I said, the third option is a, a latching toggle button. So press the button, it gets engaged. You can make this adjustment, press and release the button again, and it turns that off. Those are the three different types of trim release settings or key binds that you can have for it. The default and easiest, in my opinion, is press the button while you're making the adjustments. And then once you've got the helicopter in the attitude that you want it, you release it and it's going to hold you right there. So hopefully this explanation cleared up some of that. If you have questions specifically, come on over to the Hype Performance Group Discord. There's an H160 channel. I'm usually hanging out there and I'd be happy to try and explain a little bit more or even better, leave a comment. Uh, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe. And also click on the link and check out my other socials. I'd love to have you guys follow me on YouTube, uh, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, or X. Um, and ask me all the questions that you have. Appreciate you guys being here and checking out the video. And we will see you guys in the next one.